And it wasn't like the only such move because then, then we, then we moved into oh, the sprint off. Deux. Well, Kopecky's off. Volring got back to her. We've got those two next to each other on the last few slopes of the Siena climb. And I'm like, what's going to happen now? There's a few scenarios that can happen. Kopecky was the preset leader, like Longo Borghini and UAE tour yeah. for Trek, and they give Kopecky the victory. That's option one. Option two is, Volring has done the mystique work, even though I feel like she hasn't done much put pulling compared to Kopecky in the last section. I feel like Kopecky's done most of it. So that's option two, give it to Volring for her work for Kopecky. And option three is, you sprint for it. <laughs> you fucking sprint for it. Well, I mean, I could tell. I could tell with the way they were riding. Because once you pass Faulkner, you know she's toast. Yeah. And the other group's literally in Narnia. They're two minutes behind Ludwig and Van Vleuten fighting. But you could tell on Siena, they were going full gas side by side. They weren't like, it yeah. wasn't like Wout and uh, Laporte. And then this is where it got crazy, Benji. <laughs> Volering crests the Siena climb first. Yeah. She kind of eases up. And then you see Kopecky sprint in the saddle to pass her the same way Stiebar passed Van Avermaet yeah. just over the crest before they go into the chicane because this final corner is almost impossible to lose from if you're first through it and the, the corner's in the, on the flat section on the top. And Vollering looked over and surprised, to me visibly surprised. I've only seen it yeah. once live, but she wasn't anticipating it from my perspective, and then jumps onto the wheel, and they're sprinting. You see the speed they're going on the top. They've gone full gas, so it's clear they're racing for it, but also the Volering had been surprised, and then Kopecky, like, full-on goes um, outside apex, fully to the outside barrier with the brake check on the final corner, sprints out of it, and then Volering gets in the draft, and this is what's crazy, which will probably get lost. No one's ever won from that position, yeah. ever. I don't Ever. think. And I thought Kopecky's done her by the surprise. And Volering beats her easily, by the way. I don't know why there was a long delay. She beat her by a fucking wheel. Yeah. <laughs> like from like maybe from the overhead. I think I just like calling it front on live. Maybe Volering the shock wins. The shock of the situation was like, who just won this? <laughs> I think they that's the factor. Jumping in, jumping on Swift onto the Zwift Hub 499, the best indoor smart trainer of 2023, voted by, bicy voted by Bicycling Magazine. Gone are the days of four-figure direct drive smart trainers, perfect for the winter, which seems to be here to stay. Someone told me that winter doesn't end on the 1st of March, so I'm learning things, new things every day. Thanks to Zwift for supporting the show, as always. Well, like... I don't have a problem with a, spin, a sprint adieu. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. Because if you agree certain parameters, both riders need to know how we're going to play it, yeah. when, what we're going to do, etc. I think you can do it. Then both should be happy. I don't think if riders get confused about what was supposed to happen and another rider sprints from their wheel and gets the jump on them, that creates a good environment. Like, imagine yeah. if Benji E3, let's go, let's look at comparison because we've had a couple recent ones. E3 last year. Yeah. Christophe Laporte sprints from Wout's wheel to, and bike throws him on the line. <laughs> he probably gets let go, right? He probably gets <laughs> fired. <laughs> <laughs> no, especially after getting a victory in Paranese. In Paranese, yeah. <laughs> Imagine they should have. It would have been good content for well, us. Amazing. Um, <laughs> why? But this is why I want to go all the way back to Latolfe. I want to know, and only those two riders will know, why is it quote unquote fair? I'm sort of Team Kapeki here. Why is it fair that Kapeki will wait for Volering, not drop her when she could have? I think yeah. the moment she could have in the run in Easily. dropped her. That Vollering then gets to go for the win on Siena. Yeah, I agree with that. But there's also the factor of like, they decided not to do that. But then what happened in the cooperation? I feel like Kopecky took over easily, which is logical because she's the one with the most energy on paper because Vollering 
had been riding ahead, fighting with horses and so forth before already. Now, when it comes to Volring, she always like, Kopecky always had to like point her elbow of take over to Volring, but maybe that's because Volring was done for after her work. Then again, clearly not done for after the race, that's, that's for sure. She still had energy on, on the Siena slopes. So maybe the distrust started there already with the cooperation from Kopecky's side, or do you not see that? I mean, we don't know what was agreed. We don't know what the plan was. Did they know? Well, here we go. So, <laughs> Anne Brackman on Twitter said, uh, one of the big fans of the podcast, no, we hadn't made any arrangements along the way, says Lotta Kopecky about Volering. I don't know who wins. And then she says, we wait for the photo finish. So, Kopecky says after the race that... There were no arrangements. And then Brachman follows up with a quote tweet saying, Volering says, Volering now, whoever was first on top on the climb was allowed to win, which was Volering. So who do you believe, Benji? That's risky. By the way, I do want to set this right. Um, Brachman is like a, a, a solid journalist in Belgium about cycling, not just someone who listens to the podcast. But I will say between those two, um... It's impossible to know. I think they both have their egos in cycling, which is normal if you're a born winner like these two riders. But whatever was decided, must, I don't know. In the yeah, Dutch but what team, if you're Kopecky? What if you're Kopecky? You Volering know you could have pattern. dropped Volering. I agree, but Volering has a pattern with the Dutch team not liking her either. Yeah. I mean, you're Belgian though. We've got to <laughs> yeah, bring, <I> <laughs> we bring in some... We've got, we got a Dutch producer now. Luke, who I wanted his input, but he, he didn't want to, he's on Team Volering, I think. I'll speak for him. Um, <laughs> what if you're Kopecky? You know you could have dropped Volering at some point in the run-in. The team orders come through the radio, because you don't, it's not a democracy. Let's say the team orders come through from Anna van der Brecher in the car, and she says whoever's on the top in Siena wins. Aren't you like, yeah. what the fuck? I didn't agree to that. Uh, what the hell? Um, I don't know. Whatever it is, this is very bad for the team dynamics for the next classics race, unless they can figure it out by the time the actual classics Horrible. hit, but this is fucked. <laughs> they weren't speaking to each other after the finish, and as I said, in principle, I don't have a problem with the sprinter due a do, a do, uh, a twee. <laughs> I don't have a problem with it. That's Dutch for you, Benji. Um, but you got to man. It's a really volatile situation. So maybe I mean we spoke about the trek reel. Anything at length. At least they made a decision. The riders stuck yeah. with it. The riders were happy. Listen, we talked about that because we, you know, we had to. It's February, and whatever. This is ten times worse. Update. Anna van der Breggen said again on Brakman for the reporting here. No, we didn't agree anything. Um, we didn't expect them to be together at the end of Siena. If they caught Faulkner very late, we didn't say anything as a team leading. What's important in that is that we were first and second. So who do we believe? I believe Anna van der Breggen. But, okay, so we know the car didn't say whoever's on top of the climb. The riders so might have agreed on it. The riders might have said that. I believe Kopecky. You believe Kopecky? Though. But I believe Kopecky. I'm Team Kopecky on this as well. I'm Team Kopecky on this. I've seen enough Dutch races Good. in international I competitions. I might I'm have slashed the Australian trade agreement if you uh, if you didn't agree here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd be out of the EU. Um, but yeah, hey, but uh, they did win what one two. Eh? What, like, what can I they think race happened? together? They they have to race together. They're they're forced to race together. They'll, they'll figure <laughs> it out. They might not like each other very much, but is this exact scenario going to happen in the next Classics as well? I don't see it happening. Yes, possibly. I don't see it happening. Roubaix, that's not going to happen. I think... RVV, maybe. A rider on a team that is not SD Works is going to win a major race this year because... SD Works, I mean, fuck, this is not even a hot take. This literally oh, they did it last year. year. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> SD Works might not have the best tactics and another team will win the race. But I mean, like, a really obvious example where I think Voller and Kopecky, they are never sacrificing for each other again, right? 
I wouldn't. Yeah. If I was Ireland. I would meet her. 